Hello and welcome to Playing Favorites. I'm your host, Tasha Meyer. Everyone has favorites. And on this show, we talk about all kinds of our favorite things. Today, on Playing Favorites, my guest is professional big wave surfer, Kyle Tierman. Welcome to the, the show. Thanks for having me. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out more about you, you, Kyle. Let's do it. When did you know you wanted to be a pro surfer? I knew that I wanted to be a pro surfer when I was probably 12 years old. I first started skateboarding when I was maybe seven or eight years old. Wow. And I had a group of friends that would uh, come over and we had a little half pipe in my backyard and we'd go skateboard. And I remember being maybe 11 and I called my friend's house and his mom answered and said, hey, uh, he's out surfing. So I remember hanging the phone up and thinking, well, I guess I got to learn how to surf. And then I went out surfing a few times and got totally creamed by the wave, but I fell in love with it. And by the next year, I remember going back to school and I stood up in front of the class and told the teacher and all the classmates that I wanted to be a pro surfer. Well, I'm practically a pro surfer myself, but not much a big wave guy. So, how do you become a pro, pro surfer? So, technically, what being a pro surfer is means that you're getting paid to surf. So, a company is paying you to surf or you're winning money in a surf competition. What I do most of the time is travel around the world and go on surf trips that aren't related to surf competitions. But I have a sponsor that makes clothes called Patagonia, and they pay me some money to go on some of these trips and basically get media uh, for them. So I'll go with a photographer. So let's say that you're the photographer, and you could come on the trip, and then we would try and link up and get good surf photos that would then go into a magazine or on Patagonia's website. So you kind of, so kind of Mr. Popular. I'm like, <laughs> I'm basically like a glorified model. I guess like they like I am more just like wear clothes and they want to take photos of me wearing the clothes. But I happen to then also be on a surfboard. So it works out really great because there are some really amazing places that I get to go. Like just recently, I was uh, in West Africa in a place called Namibia that has one of the best waves in the world. And this is a wave that goes for over two miles long and you can get barreled the whole way. So surfing's been a really great ticket for me to be able to see the world. That must have been a huge canyon for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Namibia is really amazing. There's, there's, it's, a, it's a whole country basically of sand. Like you'll be surfing this wave and in the background you'll see these huge mountains. They look like literal mountains, but they're just made of sand. And on the beach there are uh, jackals. They're kind of like wild dogs and the, and the jackals will roam the beach near this perfect wave in Africa. But you've had a chance to surf all over the world as well, right? Well, not really all over the world, only in Santa Cruz. Only in Santa Cruz. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, and Hawaii. And Hawaii as well. Yeah. Hawaii is beautiful. I love it. Hawaii love is it. the birthplace of surfing. Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, so the ancient Hawaiians would take huge koa wood trees and they would shape them down into surfboards. And it was known as a very spiritual sport. So all of the kings and queens would surf. Uh, but... You know, surfing also, a lot of the places that you go, you learn about the culture and you also learn about the history and the politics. So when Hawaii uh, was occupied in the 19th century, they outlawed surfing. So the Hawaiians had to do it illegally for a number of years before it was made legal again. Um, but when you go to Hawaii, it's not just a sport. It's a really deep part of their culture. Right. Yeah. No wonder I love to surf. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also trying to secret secretly learn about the history of ancient Hawaiian. Yeah. So without my parents knowing. So <laughs> <laughs> um so you know that spot that you surfed at, Cowles. So that was one of the first spots ever surfed outside of Hawaii. So so a couple of Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian princes, they came over to Santa Cruz uh and they got surfboards shaped out of redwood trees. And then they went and they surfed that spot called the San Lorenzo River Mouth, which is about a half a mile away from Cowles. 
So hundreds of years ago, there were ancient, there were Hawaiians surfing uh, in Santa Cruz, which was Ooh. one of the first places outside of Hawaii to ever be surfed. So when, so when you're out at Cowles, you're uh, part of a little bit of history. I love being part of our history. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what was the biggest wave you had ever surfed? The biggest wave that I have ever surfed uh, it was probably about 40 feet on the face. I'll tell you the story of the biggest wave I ever surfed in my life. Um, I was going up to Mavericks really early in the morning, and uh, I was so nervous about surfing these waves that when we got to Half Moon Bay, I accidentally filled my car up with gasoline, and it takes diesel, right? So I was driving in to Mavericks about 10 blocks away, and then all of a sudden, clunk, clunk, my car just died on me, mm. right? So I had to push my car all the way to the Mavericks parking lot. So I was really stressed out already before going mm. out and surfing these really dangerous waves. But then I was like, you know what? These waves don't come around that often. I'm going to try and reset and paddle out. So I did that and I went out there and uh, it was probably 20 minutes into the session that this wave came. And when a wave that big comes, um, it's really hard to remember what actually happens. You kind of just go into autopilot and, and you just make a decision to paddle as hard as you can and hopefully you catch the wave, right? Um, yeah, it's and I remember, I remember catching it and there's video of the wave, but I honestly don't remember anything else about the wave, except that I made it all the way into the channel and uh, people were hooting for me. And <laughs> I, I, it was great. I have the video of it, but it, it kind of feels like it happened to someone else. What's your favorite surfing move? My favorite surfing move? Uh, my favorite surfing move is to get barreled. Ooh. Do you know what getting barreled is? Uh, let me guess. You're going to go in circles. Um, no, getting barreled is when you go inside the wave. Oh. So other people call it getting tubed as well. So when you're getting tubed, it means that you're riding on a wave and the wave yeah, yeah, curls yeah. over you and you can be inside the wave without actually getting touched. And it's a really special feeling because you're basically in this room of water, but you're completely dry. And if you get a really good barrel, then you can come shooting out the end without ever getting <laughs> touched. And that's the ultimate. Like I told you about this wave in Namibia that I had a chance to surf. That wave barrels the whole time. So you can just pull into the barrel and sit in this room of water yeah. for sometimes like as long as 30 seconds. But time slows down whenever you're in the tube. Right. Yeah. It's like a portal through time. Yeah. It's like water. It is like a portal through time. Yeah. People always say time slows down when you're in the barrel. Why do you surf big waves? Aren't small waves easier yes small waves are easier but i really love to challenge myself when i was a kid i never thought that i was going to surf big waves but then as i got older it was really gradual right i surfed a two foot wave then a four foot wave then a six foot wave and then mavericks which is one of the best waves in the world is only about an hour from my house so I reached out to a friend of mine who is a really accomplished big wave surfer and asked him to take me out there and show me the ropes. And I found that I really enjoyed pushing myself and I really enjoyed scaring myself. Uh, and another thing that might be surprising is that I really enjoyed wiping out on a big wave because when you wipe out on a big wave, it shows you that you're okay after it. You know, yeah. like it, like some of the worst experiences where you totally just wipe out and then you come up and you say, wow, I'm still okay, can be a really good lesson in life. Yeah. So even though I don't try to wipe out, I've found that wiping out on a really big wave has uh, taught me a lot of confidence. Same with bo boogie boarding. Same with boogie boarding, yeah. Yeah, and plus, let me tell you this. This is a... Uh, uh, a, a story of what actually happened to me when I was boogie boarding in Hawaii. Okay, so basically, I was out there boogie boarding, and this big wave came, and then the next thing I knew, I was underwater, and so, oh, my my board went above me. I tried to get up like that, but my board was above me, so I went back down. Hit, hit the sand hard, so it went in my mouth. Whoa. And the stung my eyes red. 
and it left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> and then it, it, it also gave me, and I think Sand gave me a few scrapes. Oh, wow. But I was used to it. I easily got over that. You easily got over it? Yeah. So the other thing is, try not falling off on your boogie board. <laughs> what did you have to tell yourself when you were underwater? Uh, did any of your any part of yourself get scared, and did you have to calm yourself down? I tried to calm myself down by talking, but all that came out was, was big bubbles. Bubble, bubble, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want the self-talk underwater to be inside your head. Yeah. <laughs> because keeping air in when you're underwater is really important. I've actually had a chance to take a few underwater courses where I learn how to hold my breath for a really long time to Same. surf big waves. You have as well? Well, I try to meditate underwater. You try to meditate underwater. Yeah, but eventually you'll pass out. Yes, <laughs> eventually you will pass out. Now but, we are going to talk about a, a specific favorite of yours. Your favorite non-serving activity, so what is it? My favorite non-serving activity right now is stand-up comedy. I'm pretty new to it, but I'm really into it. And I'm actually going to yeah. go perform this evening. What was your first time on stage like? My first time on stage did not go well. Hmm. I went up and I told a bunch of sort of jokes, but then uh, no one laughed. And it felt a bit like the walls were closing in on me. And it was all I could do just not to pass out in front of the audience. Are there a lot of servers who become c comedians? I don't know many surfers who also do comedy. In Santa Cruz, I think I'm the only one. But it's actually kind of my shtick. Like, I pretend like uh, I'm this totally... Uh, surfed out surfer bro right but also like i'm kind of a geek inside and i'm conflicted between being a total geek and a surfer bro which is actually who i kind of am in real life huh. so you are a combo and sometimes doing stand-up comedy feels more scary than surfing big waves yeah especially when it doesn't go well because in stand-up comedy a lot of the times when you do really well they say oh man you're killing and in surfing, if you're surfing really well, they say, oh, man, you're killing it. And I assume the reason they say that is because if you're not killing it surfing, the wave's killing you. And if you're not killing it in comedy, the audience is killing you. Yeah. Unless if the audience is sharks, they'll eat you. The audience sometimes does feel like sharks. <laughs> That's a great point. You, you know, another similarity between comedy and big wave surfing is that... Uh, if someone falls on a really big wave, the, the people who are watching tend to go, ooh, and that's the same face they make when someone is doing a really bad set in stand-up comedy. Uh, wow. Yeah. What a co coincidence. Isn't it? I, well, I like to tell jokes, too. You, you do? Yeah, but my dad thinks that my, my jokes are just way dead like a... Like, uh, dirt. Well, I'll be the judge of that. What's your joke? Okay, so here's the joke. What do you get when you cross Dashiell and a joke? What do you get when you cross Dashiell and a joke? A bad joke. <laughs> nice See, one, man. I love it. That's the only one my dad likes. <laughs> now it's time for the speed round. I have a list of categories on these cards. And Kai was going to tell me his fifth favorite for each category. Let's start! What's your favorite ice cream topping? Raspberries. Huh. Mine's just all chocolate and brownies. I yeah. <laughs> love chocolate. What's your favorite super vi villain? My favorite super villain is the Joker. Huh. He's my, my favorite Batman one, but my favorite all time one? Uh, Thanos. Thanos. Uh, I can see that he's a jerk. Mm. And a big idiot. Yep. But overall, I think he's cool. Uh, but not really attractive because his face is purple. What is your favorite children's book? I'm going to go with the Berenstein Bears. Oh, those ones are good. I used to read them. 
I love the Berenstein Bears. I got me too. Where's your favorite wild animal? Speaking of animals. I think my favorite is just the, the duck billed platypus. Duck billed platypus, that's good. They're one. really cool. You know my favorite They're weird. My favorite wild animal is an axis deer. What's that? An axis deer is a deer that can be found in Hawaii. And it was brought <laughs> over uh, it was brought over from India and it's this beige deer that's really beautiful with white spots. And uh, they've populated all over Hawaii with these. Hu- the, the males have huge antlers, Some and they're also very, they're very skittish because they've evolved to uh, to hide from the Bengal tiger. And there are a lot of hunters in Hawaii that uh, that hunt axis deer um, for food. Um, and these deer are all over Hawaii. So next time you're out there surfing, maybe you'll see an axis deer as well. <laughs> I look forward to that. Yeah. And the reason why I like the duck bill platypus is because, well, and I'm sure so you don't know this cool fact is that, that they're one of the strangest animals on the planet. Really? Yeah. I know pretty much everything about them. That's so cool. They're endangered, and they're one, of, and they're like the only mammal that lay that that lay, that lay eggs. No way. They didn't know that. I didn't. That's so interesting. What's your favorite surfing movie? My favorite surfing movie is one that a friend of mine made called Get Rad. And Uh it's a Santa Cruz surf film. And it's my favorite because he actually put me in the movie. And I had a surf section in it and everything. It was pretty cool. No. But for the movie, he said, all right, well, I have this idea. Before your surf section starts, you're going to go on the Santa Cruz wharf. And you're going to skate off of this quarter pipe and then jump off of the wharf and into the water. And we're going to shoot it so that then when you f- go into the water, you're going to come up and you're going to be in your wetsuit and on a surfboard. So I said, you know what? I'll do it. That's my favorite f- surf movie. Get rad. What's your favorite Star Wars character speaking of films, by the way? Yoda. Oh, same! No way! Yeah, Yoda is very wise. Yeah, wise and short and small. <laughs> yes. What's your favorite kind of music? Well, that changes a lot, but I was recently in Africa, and I was listening to a lot of African music. Mm. Um, So these are, you know, a lot of drum beats, a lot of instrumentals. I like music where there's a lot of people involved, and it's very, very vibrant, and all of those instruments are coming together. Well, well, I like K-pop and rock and roll. But mostly rock and roll! Let's find my, my imitation of a guitar. I got that. <laughs> What's yours? <laughs> pretty good. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. I gotta work on it. Me too. <laughs> What's your favorite ocean? I gotta go with the Pacific Ocean. The ocean right out here. Um, the Pacific Ocean is my home, and I've spent a lot of time in, in it. Um, you know, one thing that's interesting about waves, though, is that when a wave washes up on your shore, that wave traveled from thousands of miles away, if it was a big one. So waves and ocean conditions can travel from ocean to ocean before they end up on your beach. Right, yeah. kind of interesting to think about. Next time you're out looking at waves, yeah. you could think, wow, maybe that wave traveled here all the way from Australia. Or maybe from Antarctica. Exactly. Yep. Or the Arctic Ocean. You got it. Or the Indian. Yep. <laughs> you know all the oceans. Yeah. Thank you to Kyle Timmon for joining me today. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. You're a great host. I didn't have to look at my notes once. <laughs> great. <laughs> and thanks to you for watching. Be sure to catch the next episode of Prime Favorites. And remember to like and subscribe. Bye-bye. See ya.